Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new to the channel, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share uh, the videos with your fellow trading colleagues. If you find the um, content that I create uh, useful um, uh, for your trading, right? And um this week's questions or two questions, two parts uh, from, I think, the same person. And the first question was uh, that he has a quick question. How do you know what's priced in or what's what the percentage expectation is for other central banks? Just like we have the CME FedWatch tool for the Fed. And uh, question two is another question. Uh, how do we know the whisper number um, for some key news events for the dollar, uh, such as non-farm payroll, retail sales, and all? And I'm not too sure what the whisper number is, but I'm going to guess um, basically the forecasted number. So uh, I think that's basically what it what, what, what it's referring to. So I'll answer that at the end of the uh, analysis video. So stick around for that if you want to know the answers or my answers to uh, those questions and uh, I will answer the best questions that I feel the best questions um, in a video um, in my weekly videos at the end of the video so if you want your question answered here and it's a good one and I think it's a good one then uh, post it on the YouTube channel and I will get back to you and um, answer it in next week's video or you have a chance to anyways so this week week ahead first of May um, this week is set up to be extremely busy with a number of key events scheduled. Investors will closely follow the US Labour Report as well as the monetary policy decisions of the Federal Reserve and European Central Bank. Additionally, uh, talks about earnings there and the service ISM services and manufacturing PMI jobs openings and external trade data in the US will also be in focus. Also, central banks in Australia um, will decide on interest rates while inflation rates will be released for the euro area um switzerland is what we look at as well and the netherlands finally manufacturing pmis are expected from china canada is the are the two main ones that we're that we're looking at um in terms of currencies and we don't necessarily trade the chinese yuan but um, China is important to pretty much the global economy because it is the world's economic engine at the end of the day. And if China is growing and manufacturing is growing, then it should have an effect actually on commodity currencies like the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, and possibly Canada in terms of uh, in terms of oil. So let's see uh, how that works. But getting into some more fundamentals and some technicals and going to the dollar index. And the dollar index, just a measure of dollar strength against the basket of currencies like the euro, the pound, uh, and the yen. And um, we look at, really just look at the uh, dollar index um, to kind of get a gauge of overall dollar strength. And so this week, the last five days, um, really has kind of just been in this tight um, auction, this range between the 101s um, and the low was, yeah, the one, the 100 um, area. So it hasn't really moved too much in comparison to what you see, you know, the, in the previous weeks. So um, what's uh, be, basically being accepted is the, is the value of the dollar. And what will change this is if anything is unexpected, right? Meaning that um, fundamentally, if the Federal Reserve decide that they want to uh, hike more than expected, yeah, then you're probably likely to see, you know, the price of the dollar um, go higher um, or likely again, likely not necessarily guaranteed, it's probabilities, but likely to go higher. And um, but if not, if there's a surprise to the market and a negative surprise, meaning that the Fed actually don't hike rates, you know, come come this week, then you could probably see the dollar start to Fall. So that's going to be something to watch. Um, but looking at what happened in, in the week, so US data, um, US inflation pressures persist, reinforcing case for Fed hike. So the Fed hike pretty much is uh, priced in to a, to, to a large degree. And so we had core PCE prices gauge rose 0.3% uh, in March for a second month. Um, and so services measure watched by Fed Pal uh, decelerated. And so two key gauges showed persistent US inflation measures in recent months, uh, buttressing the case for another Federal Reserve 
interest rate hike next week. So that's the expectation. And if you go to the CME uh, uh, FedWatch tool, pretty much it has been priced in, right? It was 83.9%, um, 84% uh, um, of um, the market has really kind of priced in, um, you know, a rate hike. There is obviously a 16% chance at the moment that uh, the Fed will hold, um, but typically you want to go for um, really the, the the market pricing in and not to necessarily answer the question now. We'll get into that a bit, you know, at the end of the video in terms of what pricing in really means. But also as well, we had um, US economic growth slow to 1.1% while inflation accelerates, as we know, inventory, in, inventories, dented GDP, tempering surge in consumer spending, um, and so what does that mean, right? You've got rising inflation and you've got um, a slowing economy. And that basically means you've got stagflation concerns, right? Stagflation is when you have slowing economy, contracting economy and uh, rising inflation. So uh, mixed data, US data raises stagflation concern. And stagflation is not a, uh, an economic um, environment that is uh, that the Fed wants to really kind of be in, and so um, it's uh, it's very um, difficult at the moment uh, for the Fed because they want to try and avoid uh, stagflation and really trying to, um, I guess, uh, what's the term? I guess a, a, a engineer a soft landing, right? Soft landing meaning you know contract. The economy, the economy starts to contract, but not go into a deep recess, uh, recession. That would be more of a hard landing. So stagflation fears for the dollar. And so what does that all mean? Pretty much for me, um, I think the um, Federal Reserve are going to be one and done. And that's what's expected for, um, that's what's been basically um, forecasted by lots of banks. And so, um, you know, rate hike is already priced into how high can it go? It's really all about what the Fed kind of says during the meeting and what the future expectations are as, you know, the uh, the, rate, the rate hike is already priced in. So um, depending on what the Fed say will, de will depend on what the dollar does in the short term. But overall, I think over the long term, medium to long term, which is really where my main focus is, I think the dollar, um, you know, declines. So if there is a pullback to some degree into one of these areas, uh, the 1022 area or the 1028 areas. I think that's going to be a really nice pullback to try and short dollar. Again, not financial advice, of course, um, just basically telling you what I'm doing. Moving on to the uh, dollar yen and the yen this week. Um, there was a big announcement on set. I think it's here. Yep. BOJ's Ueda scraps rate guidance commits to stimulus for now. So the market was uh, expecting there to be a little bit of hawkishness or a bit, little bit of guidance as to whether yield curve control, um, which is a monetary policy measure to keep the currency devalued, in fact, was potentially, you know, on the way to being removed. And so because Radar has uh, reinforces the commitment to easing, yeah, easing, uh, QE, quantitative easing, is a, is a measure that actually um, devalues the currency. And because he's committed to continue with yield curve control, um, the market has pretty much taken that as, a, I guess, a short-term um, uh, sell of the yen. But I do think that um, the, the policy should want to change at some point this year. And any hint that, you know, Ueda is going to change the policy should really strengthen the, the, the yen it's just really about a timing issue so prices came up prices could have went to the downside um as we were kind of analyzing from last week but unfortunately uh, the fundamentals didn't you know follow through for the uh, for the dollar yen so any dollar yen trades that you were going short um basically probably likely to get stopped out on that one but doesn't mean that it's uh, the trade is to go long um, me personally, I don't think um, I'm really looking to go along with that dollar. In fact, I'll probably look for some sort of short trade in and around these areas and possibly just above that um, area as well. Uh, but I'll wait until probably we get there. You could probably look at it like, where is it? Probably from here to here. And then you've got another supply zone. So one of these supply zones up top, zooming out, I think maybe the 138s, the top of the 137s, and then even into the 138s would be quite a decent area to look for uh, some short trades if prices can get up there. And it also depends on what the Fed do as well. Um, so uh, if the Fed are, are dovish, I do think that the upside is going to be capped. Um, dollar Swiss, <clears throat> again, the Swiss has been uh, quite um, strong. 
nothing really changed from last week. Just really looking for any type of pullback into a decent zone before getting, um, uh, I think, probably short on this. If I was looking for a trade on this pair, um, I'd rather look to buy the Swiss franc over the uh, the US dollar. Um, but I'm not really interested in this pair, to be fair. But if there is a I think technically this is really nice, but fundamentally, um, I think the, the Swiss franc has the edge for now. Um, moving on to the dollar CAD. Um, yeah, dollar CAD, you know, broke through that supply zone. Um, and uh, as there was uh, some, I guess, maybe some hawkishness about the uh, dollar, and then it's pretty much come down. So um, I do think that the uh, eventually uh, the forecasts, bank forecasts do say that the Canadian dollar should eventually strengthen against the dollar, but it would be more about um, the dollar devaluing rather than the uh, Canadian dollar increasing in value. So again, not really a pair that I'm interested in, but if you are interested in trying to get short on this, then a pullback into the 137s would be the best uh, place to look for a uh, sell trade. Um, and if you're looking to actually buy, we're actually in a decent demand zone. If you're looking to buy the dollar against the... Um, the Canadian dollar, the US dollar against the Canadian dollar. So uh, we come down into this zone right here. So depending on, um, again, what your bias is, fundamental bias, then um, that actually is a decent zone to look for any kind of long trades intraday. So you just go down into lower time frames and look for some sort of uh, uh, entry if you want to look for that. Now, um, going back to the daily, looking at the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and prices did come down to a decent zone. I'm saying this last week. A decent area didn't quite come into the um into the demand zone unfortunately but i was thinking if it did then it could be a decent bounce um didn't quite come in but this i think is fact this zone is still valid so if you do get a pullback into um the 1061 area and you want to be a buyer of the new zealand dollar uh for whatever reason then i think that is a decent technical area to look for any kind of long trades short trades looking to um, short this um, New Zealand dollar and buy the US dollar. I think the first area is going to be at least at the six twos, six two twos um, around here to look for any kind of short trade. With uh, you've got that intraday or, or I should say um, uh, daily support and resistance as uh, some confluence. Uh, pound dollar, pound dollar keeps going from strength to strength, and we've been uh, had a long bias on the uh, on the pound dollar for a little bit now, and so um, again, my bias is to go long, and prices uh, just keep going higher. So waiting for a decent pullback on this uh, this trade <clears throat> or on this pair, I think that level's probably uh, gone now into uh, that uh, supply zone so we're probably gonna we may head up into this area here um which is a uh, supply zone from june 20 uh, 2022 but um my bias is to go long anyway, so I'm, I'd be looking for any kind of pullbacks into a demand zone. I still think that this zone down into the one two fours, even just one two three fifties and below, I think it's going to be uh, nice for a buy trade. Um, if we can, if prices can come down into that zone, we have made a higher high, and so there is technically a demand zone right here as well. Um, you do have also a uh, a nice decent area of support in that zone as well and so um yeah i think the first area to look for any kind of buy trades is going to be again around that one two three fifty area before and even better would be down into the one two threes uh, round number but um yeah anyway any pullback i think is going to be a decent buy um the pound fundamentally uh let's have a look uk Interest rates. Goldman Sachs, this was quite interesting. Goldman Sachs sees Bank of England's base case rate rising to 5%, almost matching the Fed. So um, Goldman Sachs says it expects UK borrowing costs uh, will close a gap with the US raising its outlook for the Bank of England's key rate to 5%. So um, the, the pounds have had a reversal of fortunes this year. It was actually expected to go into one of the deepest recessions um, out of the G10 currencies. And um, it's just staged a, 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 an incredible bounce back, basically, uh, since the beginning of the year. Year to date, you can see pretty much um, beginning of the year, we've pretty much gone uh, over, so over a thousand pips? No, about 700 pips to the upside. So, um yeah, it's been um, a definitely a, a, 
a major comeback for the pound and appreciation. Um, and I think it probably will continue, but also as well, one thing to keep an eye on is uh, their GDP, right? GDP numbers, and they may suffer the same fate as um, as the US in terms of uh, stagflation, where the um, inflation is, is still high, but uh, the economy contracts. But for now, all the forecasts are pretty much saying, the bank forecasts are saying uh, a higher pound, even as high as 130s I've seen um uh, forecasts so uh any pullbacks i think are definitely or well, for me anyway are buying opportunities for now as long as the data supports the narrative um euro dollar so again my bias is to the upside you know one more hike for the fed is expected and two or three more hikes is expected although um where is it now uh europe uh, their latest GDP, Eurozone avoids recession, but inflation picks up. So, um, yeah, the, the it was it was okay numbers, I think, um, for the Eurozone economically. It just avoided a recession. It was below it, the numbers expected, but again, it was above zero. So that was um, decent for the Euro um, and inflation picking up, which basically... Uh, means that the eurozone inflation fluctuates tests uh, ECB as it weighs a, actually a smaller hike. So data will be released in 48 hours before Frankfurt session. And what was this? This was the 28th, 29th year. And so, um, and so, yeah, the numbers talk, talk, talking about the inflation numbers will be crucial. But um, yeah, and the economy is crucial for a, a larger hike because the economy came out a bit. Uh, uh, numbers came out a bit less than expected. I think what they're going to be is a bit more cautious on the hikes, but they still are expected to hike more um, and further than the US is. So whereas the US are expected basically a one and done, the euro area and the ECB are actually expected to uh, hike several more times. And so uh, with that being said, any pullbacks, I think, are buying opportunities for the uh, for the ECB, providing again the economy can uh, support their uh, uh, the rate cuts. So any pullbacks into this area, nothing really changed from last week because we had one, two, three, four, five days. Yeah, we haven't really had a deeper pullback in to to get really kind of long on this currency pair. Although, again, you can draw a demand zone right there. So. Yeah, many pullbacks since the 10950s, 109s would be better. The deeper, the better, right? Um, Aussie dollar. So Aussie dollar came down into this, into this lower end of the demand zone. And um, the Australian dollar is actually expected to hold rates. And so they're going to release um, their um, uh, statement, the RBA. And I think there is an, there is a potential for... The, this to actually go higher if they do hike one more time, right? I put down here, there's one more hike expected. In fact, that's not right. In fact, they're expected to hold. And so because they're expected to hold, H-O-L-D, because they are expected to hold at the next meeting, um, I think this has also been priced in, um, in terms of um, the hold. So, if they do hike, I think the Australian dollar will appreciate or should appreciate um, because that would take the market by surprise. And so, yeah, um, I do think that that is uh, there is an opportunity if they do hike, um, if they do hike rates. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And gold. No, in fact, one second before I do gold, I'm going to go back to the Australian, um, just in case you do want to be a buyer of the US dollar against the um the us you've got some supply zones here as well so um yeah i think what you need to do if you, again if you have a wide area of 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 supply a uh, daily supply the one of the one of the things that you can do one of the things that i look at is just looking at support and resistance within that area of supply right and so um if you are looking to trade which you know you don't know which zone to kind of look at then just look at where you've got you know some confluences in that area of supply one of them being horizontal supply and demand so that would be really the area the best area to look for any kind of uh, short trades or just above it in fact in a fresh area of supply and then finally gold so gold <clears throat> uh looking for a um, another move higher if the, depending on whether the u.s 
dollar, um, you know, comes in a bit weaker um, after the uh, rate, uh, expected rate hike, I should say. Um, also, I did find this um, with HSBC and it talks about the, um, it talks about gold and it says, uh, however, our precious metals analyst thinks that there may be limits to how high gold prices can go. First, a lot of risk, especially geopolitical and trade risks may have been uh, priced into the market should market volatility decline a safe haven demand for gold may erode uh, in addition it is likely to see further uh, dollar weakness this year in a view in our view a weaker dollar supports gold prices but may not propel gold higher as gold prices are at levels consistent with further dollar weakness and so um yeah interesting and it they say if uh, anticipated rate cuts for the dollar in, in the second half of 2023 do not materialize, gold may be undercut. And so there's always that factor as well. Um, the market is expecting gold to actually, um, or sorry, the dollar to, and the Federal Reserve to actually uh, cut rates. And so if they don't cut rates this year, or the expectation is that they don't do it this year, maybe do it next year, then that has to be priced in and then that could affect the price of gold, right? And so um, I do think that gold is, is a buy ultimately. So any pullbacks into, you know, these uh, these zones, I think are decent buying opportunities in 1940s, 1950s, and even better would be down into the 1900s, right? So anyone who missed out on this gold buying, I think it's going to be really nice, a cheap price to buy gold and you're seeing zooming out we've come up to you know a high and this is you know it's obviously seen as an expensive area for gold right who wants to buy at highs nobody so um profit taking probably going on there uh, maybe some selling but uh you know some reloading on buying for gold you know further down so let's see what happens uh with gold but my bias would be to go long anyways guys uh that's it for this week and um in fact I'm going to answer the question uh, that the um, that someone sent over. So, just as a reminder, um, so two questions, and I think I'm, I think the, starting off with the second question will help uh, answer the first question. And so, the first question was, uh, how do you know what's priced in, uh, or what the percentage uh, expectation is for other central banks? Just like we have the CME Fed Watch tool for the Fed, and the second one is uh, other. Um, another question is, how do we know what the whisper number is? I don't know what the whisper number is. I'm assuming that's a forecasted number for some key news events, such as the dollar, such as uh, non farm payrolls, retail sales and all. And so it's really important, actually, in fact, to understand um, the, the concept, first of all, of priced in and what is priced in. And priced in basically just means um, that any everything that is known in the market um, the market has valued already, yeah, has priced in that value. And so um, you have a situation where um, there shouldn't be any surprises, yeah, in the market. And if there are surprises, that's where the market has to now price in new information, yeah, in, as, in terms of the value of an exchange rate, yeah. And so um, if you understand that, then going to the forecasted number, right? And how do we know what, you know, potentially is priced in is if you go to any calendar trading economics, right? You'll have a forecast, right? This is, this is um, uh, trading economics is forecast and then they have a consensus. So the consensus number will be, they'll get from, I can't, don't know where they get it from, but basically um, they do have a, they somehow get their they get the market consensus number and then they have their um their, their own forecasted number from the data and sometimes they agree and sometimes they don't so for example you'll see ism manufacturing pmi um you'll see the consensus is is 4.6 uh, sorry 46.7 but trading economics will be 46.5 right but it's somewhere within that region that 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 um uh that number right that forecast now this is already likely to be priced in right on monday because these forecasted numbers have come out maybe a week or two in advance and forecasted numbers 
Um, I don't know exactly when they come out because economists really have to kind of crunch the data and analyze everything and then they kind of put it out whenever they put it out. Typically, it might be maybe about a week or two before um, they release the numbers. It doesn't mean that um, they haven't done the calculations way before then, of course, because all the, as well, banks also have their own economists and then they've got their own calculations. And so... Um, once their economists do their analysis, then that actually has to get priced in as well. And so um, it's almost like you have to forward think, yeah? You have to think about, um, you know, what is coming in the future. And once you understand what is likely to happen in the future, then you start to either buy or sell or don't do anything. And that's what we're doing. Um, and that's what the market does when it comes to pricing in. So the numbers are really known if maybe a couple of weeks in advance and um, anything outside of the normal then has to get priced in eventually. And then by the time the retail trader, right, um, sees the release number, they already know what has been forecasted. They already, that number's, you know, is 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 old because they, they've known what the number is two, three weeks ago, yeah? Or they've guesstimated or forecasted the number. And so, um, yeah, that's pretty much, you know, when we talk, when we talk about what is, you know, um, uh, priced in. And the only way we're going to know what the, uh, again, the, the forecasted number is, is really from reading either the calendar data, like on, you know, uh, trading economics or Forex factory or wherever you get your calendar data from, or by reading um, a lot of bank forecasts, which we um, found and have access to um, in the, um, the Discord group, right? So there's that. And the second, uh, well, I guess the first question was, how do you know what is priced in? And so, um, and to what percentage? And nobody really knows what 100% is priced in. We have a gauge, I guess, right? And this is one of the best illustrations of it in terms of the FedWatch tool. And so um, the FedWatch tool is just looking at um, the, 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 I'll read it straight from the site. It says, what is the likelihood that the Fed will change the Federal Reserve target rates or interest rates at FOMC meetings according to interest rate traders? Analyze the probabilities of changes to the Fed rate and US monetary policy as implied by 30-day Fed funds futures pricing data. So, you know, speculators, uh, big money are making, um, you know, uh, bets, futures bets. And, um, you know, analyzing all that data, it looks like 83% of, of, of the market um, that they've, um, you know, surveyed thinks that the there's going to be a, you know, a hike, right? Now, the closer you get to the event is the more it gets priced in. The further away that you get, you know, to a um, uh, from an event uh, that may have yet to be priced in because obviously the, the, the further out the event, the harder it is to uh, predict. It's, it's easier to predict something that might happen uh, tomorrow than it is something that might happen next year. And so, but nobody really knows. These are just tools um, you know, that we can use as um, retail traders. But also as well, if you understand really the relationship between GDP, interest rates and inflation, then you can kind of get an idea as to what is being priced in. You don't necessarily even have to look at the FedWatch um, tool. Because if you understand that, for example, GDP is growing, right? And let's say inflation is, you know, above the, the, the central bank's 2% target. Sorry, one second. Yeah. Uh, one sec. I'm still not doing it. Sorry, can't even undo that. Right. So 2% target. Yeah. GDP is, is growing and the inflation is above 2% target. Then it's likely that the, um, central bank will start to hike rates or continue to hike rates yeah and so let's say for example on you know tomorrow let's say for example they have a um uh the um an announcement for this current um uh, uh, uh federal reserve announcement right so you've got fomc uh this week now the fed would already have priced in you know, this current data, but also as well, they're going to have to try and price in 
the June's um, data, right? Based off of the probability of them hiking rates at the next meeting, yeah? So they're always looking at least one month, two months, three months ahead. And what's the likelihood that they will hike based off of today's current data? And so um, that is really how you're looking or how you should look at the market, right? Is today's data, right? What, how is that going to affect the price in the next month or two or three? And as long as the data keeps supporting that narrative, the market will have to eventually price this data in if it hasn't already. Um, and you know that it hasn't typically because if, you know, they've got a meeting in, in, in June and May's data comes out really strong, then they're going to have to, again, price in the higher chance of there being a hike in June. And that's why you start you start buying in May in expectation for June's rate hike. And you buy in June for July or August expected, um, you know, rate hike. And so, um, you know, you, the chances of a rate hike being priced in is, is pretty much 100%. The closer you get to the event, the further away you are from the event, the less likely it is to be priced in. Yeah. And so if you're looking at trading economics or trade or trading or Forex factory and thinking to yourself, well, I'm going to press buy or sell. Yeah. Based off of the number that comes out, you're always, you're always too late. It's just not going to happen. You know, the smart money, right. Are no, um, you know, the data, the um, how, you know, fundamentals actually work and the sentiment actually works. And they're always ahead. They're always looking two, three, four months ahead of time. And unfortunately, unfortunately, um, we, you know, don't have access to all of the central banks, um, you know, tools. In fact, in the group, we have access to, I think, the, I think the Canada one. Um, and then we got the Australian one. We used to have the Bank of England, but I think they've stopped that now. They used to also be uh, from the CME um, as well. But um, but yeah, we don't have that anymore. But ultimately, you don't actually really even need it if you understand, you know, the fundamentals ahead of time and what the data is actually telling you what the central bank is likely to do at their next meeting. And typically, again, like I said, like I said, I had, you know, you have GDP. And inflation data tends to come out ahead of the, the meeting. And so um, what you're looking for is, you know, the future meeting. And so the data today, if it shows positive growth, then the likelihood is that they are going to uh, hike, you know, at the next maybe meeting or two meetings. Yeah. If the data is a bit somewhat suspect where you have, you know, data that is, you know, maybe GDP isn't growing or contracting, but inflation is going higher then the chances of them hiking at their next meeting is probably maybe looking, you know, not, not so good simply because, again, as we covered earlier, uh, that might mean stagflation. And so it's uh, difficult to hike rates in um, a contracting economy. It depends on how bad um, or how much the economy is contracting, of course. There's varying degrees of that. Um, and so that will also play a role in, you know, the uh, the future expectations. But just to guess to kind of, you know, summarize and round up and end this. And hopefully you understand it is that um, you should always try to think to, you know, one month, two months, three months uh, ahead. Right. Um, and judging but judging that on what the data is saying today yeah and also as well if you do read up on um, analysts uh, thoughts you know there's, there's the way smarter minds in us um, that we should look at and look towards their guidance if you read maybe 10 different reports and maybe seven are saying um, that they expect the, the fed to high rates in june's meeting for example then go with the majority, yeah? Don't go with the three that are saying that they're not because, you know, pretty much the big money is, is saying that, you know, they're, they're telling you where they're going, right? And I know there's a time to be contrarian. You can be contrarian sometimes, but um, at the beginning, when you're trying to understand fundamentals, I think you should go with the consensus more often than you don't go with the consensus. Anyways, uh, I hope that does help. And... Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it.
I'm trying to think, is there something else I should be I should be talking about? Also, as well, actually, matter of fact, here's another thing, just quickly looking at the time. When we talk about priced in, yeah, when we talk about priced in, priced in isn't just a single binary number, right? Doesn't mean that that is the actual price. It's important to understand that uh, uh, prices are always um, in some sort of auction or what is known as uh, known as an auction, but you know. Price, um, our traders will look at it as a range, yeah, a ranging market to some degree. And yeah, prices do trend, but it typically uh, trend within a range, right? So you can have this could be a thousand pips, for example, a move to the upside, but overall it was in a thousand pip auction. But the point I'm trying to make is this is what is known, yeah, what is known about, you know, this auction and this in this range is that. Let's say, for example, the Federal Reserve, they, you know, the market expects the Federal Reserve to hike rates once and the euro to hike rates uh, once as well. Yeah, that is definitely known by the market. Then that is going to be priced in. Yeah. And the pricing in is some people are going to some traders are going to believe that, you know, that it should be an exchange rate of maybe one. Ten. Yeah. And some traders might believe that what is known, yeah, the value of the exchange rate should be something like maybe 108, yeah? Should be basically, you know, uh, fair value, yeah? Let's say 108. Not everybody is going to agree on the value of the exchange rate, just like in an auction, yeah? Some people, you know, you might go to a, a, a property auction and some people are willing to pay more than others and some others are not willing to pay as much, right? And the same thing applies to uh, the Forex market. Some uh, uh, people are willing to pay, you know, maybe 110. Some people might think that's expensive. Some people are willing to pay and think that 108 is a, is a bargain. So there's a constant auction, right, in terms of what, you know, is known in the market Right. And that is what when price is being accepted like this. Yeah. That actually is what is known as priced in the range between the high, maybe an expensive area and a bargain area. Yeah. Is what is known as priced in that is priced in priced in isn't just a single number. Um, you know, on, on a price chart, it's a price range, a price auction. And so um, you typically have, you know, uh, these price auctions everywhere on different time frames. but I tend to look at the, the, the larger time frames to look at the, 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 the institutional, you know, um, auctions and where they think that expensive and, you know, uh, a bargain price is. And then from there, you know, plan accordingly. And so, if new information starts to come in, let's say, for example, new information is that the uh, euro is going to, you know, hike, you know, a couple more times, then what tends to happen is you then you might get a trending market where it breaks out of the price range and goes higher. And then what you'll get is that will be priced in and then you'll get another auction as to some degree. And the auction might be between 115 and maybe 112, for example because that new information has to be priced in once, you know, they discover that new information, but then once it's priced in, then the value of the, you know, Euro dollar would be worth between, you know, 115 and 112. That, that would be the auction and that would be the priced in number. Yeah. So hopefully that makes, um, that adds uh, to your knowledge in, in terms of what is priced in and what isn't. So, uh, so yeah, anyways, guys, Take care and um, all the best. Speak to you all soon and have a great trading week.